Hello people, I'm the Recolor Gamer. Today I'm going to talk about Action Comics 1000. And as most of you know, Superman is my favorite superhero. So this was a big one for me. I was really excited for it. And yes, I only got the plane cover because that's all my comic shop had. And when I pre-ordered it like forever ago I, and they asked what cover I wanted, they didn't have any selections up there. So I would have had to just guess from memory which cover. And so I didn't know. So I just went with the default cover. So that's why I don't have a variant cover. I would have loved to. There's a lot of great variant covers for this issue. You, but anyways, um, let's talk about some of the stories in this book. We're not going to be talking about every single story in the book, but we're talking about a couple. So my personal favorite was Neverending Battle, which is from Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, the current team on Superman. It's getting kicked off for Bendis, which which sucks. But they had a great storyline in this book featuring Vandal Savage, and each uh, page was a full page. It wasn't like a bracket with a bunch of panels or anything like that. It was a full page, and each one could have been a poster hanging up on my wall. Like those, I love the art. From Patrick Gleason in this book it's it's amazing how each one is just Superman going through the time stream because the setup of it is uh, Superman's flying through Metropolis going on his routine patrol and then he gets zapped out by Vandal Savage Vandal Savage captures him tells him he's gonna send him through like the time stream and it's gonna be a thing to where their time streams never overlap so that means Vandal Savage is free to do whatever he wants he's gonna take down the league do all that stuff so Superman's going through the time stream he's going through the 1930s he's fighting uh, like just gangsters from the 30s Thirties. He fights Nazis. He goes and he fights a bunch of different people. And it's really cool seeing him go through the time stream, be sent through, and again the art is fantastic. And the whole time we're getting Superman narrating it because he's telling his family why he's late to dinner. So he's telling his family like everything that happened about it and talking about how he basically got back to them through sheer force of will. And I there are some great quotes in in this story and I love it. And I think it's a it's it's a good Superman message about like don't let your circumstances dictate how things go down. Sometimes all you need is sheer force of will is to not give up and I really like that and again this was my favorite story out of the entire book overall the book was really good there were a lot of good stories but that one was definitely my favorite I enjoyed the one we got at the beginning from Dan Jurgens and it was fitting that it opened with Dan Jurgens because he's the one that's been that's helmed the action comics book since uh, it came back with uh, with DC Rebirth and he also brought Superman back um, for DC Rebirth the Superman that we actually love because we had new to Superman but then he brought him back so I liked his story also but I say probably my second favorite story because I'm gonna be talking about like my top three stories and I'll be talking about the Bendis story so but my top three stories the first one was obviously what I just talked about with Never Ending Battle then the next one would be The Car which is from Jeff Johns and Richard Donner and then the third one would be Five Minutes which is from Louise Simonson she did a great job and Jerry Ordway's art and that is fantastic but let's talk about The Car first. The Car is a really short story it's talking about the man who owns the car that uh, that Superman destroys in Action Comics number one that you see on the cover you know that famous cover of Superman holding it like smashing it into the and all the like gangsters and everyone running away it's that car and I love the story the art in it is also again I'm saying this a lot but it's fantastic the art is so good and it's about the guy taking the car to the repair shop and he's walking off and Superman comes up and like starts talking to him it's like I went back to the telephone pole where I left you but you were gone so here I am and basically talks to him about how I did some research about you I saw that your dad died in the war and that left you to take care of your sick mother by yourself and then she died and then you went to an orphanage He's like, okay, you can keep, you know, just pushing back at the world and doing all this dumb crap if you want to, or you can just be the person that was never there for you for someone else. I really like that. Again, another good message from Superman. I really like seeing Superman not always just being like, oh, bad guy, let's put him in jail. Just being like, okay, maybe this guy could turn around. Because that's also in the Dan Jurgens book. We see a bad guy that got turned around because of Superman. And I like seeing it in this story also. And again, the art's great. And it's, it's a really nice short story. I really enjoyed it. And then we have five minutes, which is a really good story also, where it just shows what Superman can do in just an average day in five minutes. So he's writing a headline, he's writing some uh, article for the Daily Planet, and he's got five minutes to finish it up, but there's all this stuff happening in five minutes. He goes and he ends up stopping a train that was going to crash into people because of the fact that the uh, the conductor had a heart attack, so he stops the train, he ends up stopping a robbery, he also ends up stopping some space debris that was coming down that was going to hurt people, and then he writes the headline all in under five minutes, and of the Jerry Ordway art, which is like classic Superman, is so great in the book, I love it, and so seeing uh, all this stuff play out through Jerry Ordway's art is great. She did the Louise Ivinson, she did a great job, and so did uh, Jerry Ordway 
Broadway. I love that story. And that was my third favorite story. So that was my top three. And I wouldn't say there were really any bad stories in this book. There were some just okay ones. But overall, it was definitely worth the $8 I spent on the book. It's really good. I uh, had a lot of great stories. And those three were my top three favorites. I want to know in the comments below also what were your guys' personal favorite from this book. But anyways, um, moving on, let's talk about the truth, which is Bendis' story, which... It's kind of sad to say that he had the the worst out of all out of the lot. It's not again. It's not that bad of a story. It's just out of all the stories we had in this book, Bendis, who's taking over both Superman books, had the worst one, which kind of sucks. Because I wasn't going in here with any like prejudice against Bendis. I'm definitely worried about what he's gonna do. But I wasn't like, oh man, I hate you, Bendis. You're gonna suck as Superman. Uh, uh, no, I'm hoping he's great. I'm hoping he does the best Superman run ever. I'm really hoping he's great as Superman. And I was, I, I was trying to come in with an open mind because I was thinking, you know, this guy's helming Superman. I'm hoping he does a great job. And I can't wait to see what he does. He seems to have a lot of passion for writing Superman now that he's out of Marvel because he's been trapped in Marvel forever and writing nothing but Marvel characters for the longest time. So I was excited to see what he could do. And this storyline, it just, it didn't fit in this format, I don't think, of the whole like, hey, here's like four pages, make us make a Superman story. Everyone else was sort of making a tribute to Superman, like this is what Superman means to me. And this is not that at all. This is just a, hey, this is a setup for my story by my book. That's what this is. This is just a, look at this cool punchy punchy action, you should buy my book. Because the Jim Lee art is fantastic, like always, it's Jim Lee. I just feel like Jim Lee's gonna get stuck on another, uh, bad book because Jim Lee sort of has this this thing where like his greatest art is on terrible writing like if you look at something like all-star batman and robin that is some of the top of the line Jim Lee art but it's so bad in all-star batman and robin the story uh, it's bad and then you have superman for tomorrow which is just a very subpar book but but Jim Lee's art is again top notch it's fantastic but the book isn't very good Jim Lee like sort of has that curse where he's great but a lot of times he gets stuck where like the art's just not very good. And then you also have, um, I can't remember the name of it. It was the Superman book from, uh, uh Superman Unchained, the Scott Snyder Superman tr book, which Scott Snyder's a great writer, but Superman Unchained was so subpar. It wasn't very good at all. And Jim Lee, again, did a fantastic job there. But it was, he got trapped where Scott Snyder, who's normally a great writer, did, meh, a so-so book. And so I'm hoping that's not the case here. I hope it's not like, oh, Jim Lee's doing this, but he's getting stuck where Bendis sucks. Hope that's not the case. But the story didn't suck, it was just, again, it didn't fit in the format of everyone else being like, here is why I love Superman, here's what I think is an interesting story, I love this character, this is my tribute to Superman, and then it's been this like, here is a preview for my book, you should buy my book, you should add it to your pull list right now. Like, that doesn't fit in this, uh, in this book, but... So anyways, let's actually talk about the contents of it. So, you have this guy, I can't remember his name, he had... And look at the book he had some stupid name like really it sounded like a lord of the rings character name let's see what did he say his name is yeah i am rogal czar like <laughs> yeah everyone everyone's gonna be remembering the classic superman villain rogal czar in 20 years everyone's gonna be like yeah hey, that guy's my favorite superman villain rogal czar could have just called him czar or called him rogal why rogal czar it's like what if mongol was like Mongol Kling, like everyone would be like, what? That's a stupid name. So but anyways, Rogal Czar is the dude's name. He looks kind of, I'm not a fan of his design. He looks kind of generic monstery, but basically it opens up with him beating the crap out of Superman. And then uh, Kara, Supergirl comes in and is like, stop beating up my cousin. And starts punching on him. And I thought oh, this was going to be, oh, this is going to be SJW Marvel type deal where the original male hero can't do anything. And then the female version of him comes in and kicks the dude's ass. But that wasn't the case. Thankfully, she just got her ass kicked also. She was just trying to help out and she got destroyed And so then Superman starts talking trash, which is kind of weird because Superman's like fighting him and getting his ass kicked the whole time And he's like sorry this fight's not going the way you thought. I'm like what? Why is Superman talking trash when he like can't even land a hit? This doesn't make no sense The guy's just like this fight's taking longer than I thought but now it's time to finish you off Just like I finished off every other Kryptonian when I blew up Krypton I told Jarell I would do so and he like stabbed Superman and that was the big reveal Was that uh, we got a Krypton retcon pretty much saying that oh it was this guy Rogal Czar that uh that caused Krypton to explode I'm not the biggest fan of the Krypton retcon, like, I wish they'd kind of leave Krypton alone. I'd be like, we've done a lot with Krypton, just, just leave it alone, fine with, like, we've, I'm fine with the reason it blew up, we don't need another one. Like, oh, it turns out the reason it blew up was because of this guy. We'll see if at the end of the day it wasn't actually him, it probably was him. I don't think they'll do a fake here, it's just, nah, this way he'll be immortalized in Superman, like, 
history so that way it's like oh that guy that villain that no one really cares about but he actually did something significant in superman's life by destroying krypton that's what he'll be known as it seems but i'm i'm still kind of hopeful that bendis does good it's just this wasn't very good this story wasn't again it wasn't terrible it just Compared to all the others, it doesn't match up. But anyways, please let me know in the comments below what did you guys think of Action Comics 1000? What was your personal favorite story? Please let me know in the comments below. And also, what did you think of Bendis' story? Because again, personally, I didn't care for it that much, but it wasn't the worst thing ever. But it was the worst story in this book, but it wasn't. that's not saying much considering the, all, most of the stories are pretty good. But yeah, anyways, I just want to hear your thoughts in the comments, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Legends never die, we've been going every night. I've been feeling way too blessed, but with Lex, I'm never stressed. They don't know just what we do, we've been out here with the crew. They don't know just how we live, think we got too much to give.